Culture is the soul of a nation. The spiritual factors or culture are as important to mankind as the physical factors such as the races of the people and the land itself. Cultural developments define the history of a nation's civilization. The complete destruction of a national culture leads to the end of the nation. Ancient nations who had created glorious civilizations were considered to have vanished when their cultures disappeared, even though the people of their races may have still survived. When the French anthropologist Champollion painstakingly studied the Rosetta Stone from ancient Egypt, when archaeologists discovered the mud and clay writing tablets of ancient Babylonia, when people could only imagine the Halabi culture of ancient India from historical remains, when scientists were wondering about the scientific achievements that may have surpassed the ancients and amazed contemporaries in the Muse Museum, which was burnt down by Caesar's expeditionary forces, when scholars were studying the culture of the lost city of Atlantis, which Plato described in his dialogues, but is now buried at the bottom of the ocean, our thoughts turned to China. This land of China has created numerous magnificent splendors in philosophy, the arts, literature, and science. It is the only country in the world whose ancient civilization has been passed down continuously for over 5,000 years. The destruction of its traditional culture is more than a tragedy, it is an unforgivable crime. Eighty-five years ago, when the Chinese Communist Party was established, the crime began. The Communist Party has an intrinsic hostility towards Chinese traditional culture. It struggles against the Chinese culture with a life and death hysteria, insatiable anger and violence. After the CCP came to power, its struggle against traditional culture became more sophisticated and systematic. Mao Zedong once said, fittingly, that he follows neither the Tao nor heaven. The Chinese culture, traditionally believed to be passed down by God, can be retold with the myths and legends of Chinese history. They include Pangu's creation of heaven and the earth, Nuwa's creation of humanity, Shenong's identification of hundreds of medicinal herbs, and Songji's invention of Chinese characters. The Taoist wisdom of unity of heaven and humanity has thus coursed through the veins of Chinese culture. Emperor Wang, who was thought of as the founder of Chinese culture, was also credited with founding Taoism. Confucius said, great learning promotes the cultivation of virtue. Confucius opened a school to teach students more than 2,000 years ago and imparted to society the Confucian ideals represented by the five cardinal virtues, benevolence, righteousness, propriety, wisdom, and faithfulness. In the first century AD, Buddha Shakyamuni's teachings traveled east to China with an emphasis on compassion and salvation of all beings. The Chinese culture became more wide-ranging and profound. Buddhism and Taoism 
established Chinese people's macroscopic understanding of the universe, life, and the human body. They are the part of Chinese culture that focused on leaving the mundane world. The influence of Buddhism and Taoism can be found to penetrate all aspects of people's lives. Chinese medicine, Qigong, Feng Shui, and divination are all rooted in Taoism. The well-known concepts of a heavenly kingdom and hell, the karmic rewards of good meeting with good and evil meeting with retribution, all of these came from Buddhism. Confucianism, on the other hand, is the part of traditional Chinese culture that focused on entering the mundane world. The profound influence of Taoism on Confucianism can be seen in such Confucian sayings as, Aspire to the Tao, align with virtue, abide by benevolence, and immerse yourself in the arts. And, if one hears the Tao in the morning, one can die without regret in the evening. Confucianism emphasized family-based ethics, in which filial piety, or the concept of loyalty to one's parents and family, played an extremely important role, teaching that all kindness starts with filial piety. Confucius advocated benevolence, righteousness, propriety, wisdom, and faithfulness, but also said, aren't filial piety and brotherly love the roots of benevolence? Family-based ethics can be naturally extended to guide social morality. Filial piety can be extended to the people's loyalty to the monarch. Confucius said, It is seldom that a person with filial piety and brotherly love will be inclined to offend those above. Brotherly love is the relationship among brothers, and it can be further extended to righteousness and justice among friends. Confucians teach that in a family, a father should be kind, a son filial, an older brother friendly, and a younger brother respectful. Here, fatherly kindness can be further extended to benevolence of the monarch toward his subordinates. As long as the traditions of a family can be maintained, social morality can naturally be sustained. As it is said, cultivate oneself, regulate one's family, rightly govern one's state, and make the whole kingdom tranquil and happy. The beliefs of Confucianism, Buddhism, and Taoism offered the Chinese people a very stable moral system. This ethical system provided a basis for sustainability, peace, and harmony in society. Take the four Chinese classics, the four most renowned novels in Chinese culture, as examples. The Journey to the West is a mythical tale about cultivation practice. A Dream of Red Mansions explains the concept of predestined relationship through a tragic love story. The third book, Outlaws of the Marsh, opens with a tale of how an official accidentally set free 108 warrior spirits who ended up becoming bandits who pillaged and plundered from the corrupt in society. The fourth book, Three Kingdoms, begins with a heavenly warning of a disaster and ends with the inescapable conclusion that everything is God's will. It states, the world's affairs rush on like an endless stream, a heaven-told fate, infinite in reach, dooms all. The use of myths in these novels was not a coincidence, but a reflection of a basic philosophy of Chinese intellectuals toward nature and humanity. These novels have had a profound influence on the Chinese mind. When speaking of righteousness, people think of Guan Yu and of the Three Kingdoms, rather than the concept itself, how his righteousness to his friends transcended the clouds and reached heaven, how his unmovable loyalty to his superior and sworn brother, Liu Bei, gained him respect even from his enemies.